All right, um, this will be a, uh, well, hopefully a relatively short video um, that breaks down the process of creating um, uh, the form uh, up in this area of the, of the chair where we have backrest blending into a front leg and then the back leg intersecting um, that um, at, a, at a given point. So this won't be a full-blown um, recreation of, of this particular design, but rather just a um, sort of um, generic look at how we can construct these uh, these types of blends, um, which can be challenging. And um, uh, fillets alone uh, just won't just won't work in this uh, situation. Um, so to get started, uh, what I'm going to do is create a couple of sketches on the top plane. Um, and I'm going to be using some basic uh, dimensions um, rather than anything uh, exactly faithful to that one particular design. So I'll start with a center line and a spline. And uh, this spline will represent um, the, uh, uh, the curve of the uh, backrest. So we'll give this a dimension here of 10. And we will make sure that the spline handle here is set to vertical, and this one up here is set to uh, horizontal. And uh, that will do it for this first sketch. And the second sketch will also be on the top plane. And we'll take a spline by itself, snap a little bit above. Uh, that one and exactly on top of that first point uh, down below. So here we'll repeat, we'll make that horizontal, make this one vertical, and then I'm going to dimension from these two points and call that three. Um, seems reasonable. So then I will exit that, go to the uh, right plane, start another sketch with a spline. And um, I will make these two points um, uh, vertical. And I'll make this point and this point also vertical. So if I go back to the right plane, grab that handle and make that horizontal, give a dimension from these two points, 1.25. And then that seems good. Okay, so I'll exit that. And in uh, this view, I will take a project curve and project these two um, sketches together to generate a 3D sketch or a 3D curve that um, will act as the top edge of my uh, of, this, of the backrest. Now I tend to. Um, well, I go back and forth. Sometimes I use just the 3D curve as a uh, as a move forward, but um, in this case, I find it uh, more convenient to convert it to an actual 3D sketch, and then I turn off the curve. Um, the reason for that is I find that creating relations and constraints with an actual sketch to be easier than a 3D curve. Sometimes the the curve entity gives me a little bit of uh, trouble in, in establishing uh, relations. So now on the front plane, I'm going to start a sketch, draw a circle, 1.25, with a center line right down the middle, which will then be constrained to the uh, bottom sketch. And this circle right here represents the uh, circular uh, um, quality of this front leg. So we can see it's pretty much around all the way up to a certain point and then it starts to transition into this more organic form. Um, so that's what that uh, circle represents there. And now we want to go on the right plane, start a sketch, and we'll grab the spline tool. We'll go from this point to this point. And I want to make sure that I'm actually coincident on that point. Looks like I am. And I'm going to just do some basic tweaks. I'll grab this spline handle right here, set it to horizontal, 
And this one I'm going to bend around until it's kind of angled about like that. Grab another spline and join that on both ends. And then tweak these handles accordingly. So I'll move this one out like that. Set it to horizontal. I'll move this one till it looks more or less uh, tangent uh, with that. Um, and now if I pick these two, I will actually make that official so it's a nice and smooth transition going around. Might give this a little bit of a uh, stretch here. Somehow, uh, and I don't quite understand, somehow when you tweak uh, splines um, after you've set up after you've set up tangency, um, they can get a little funky. Um, so I'll just delete it and reset it, um, and that'll that'll be sufficient uh, for what we're doing. So now I'll move this around, and it looks like we lost uh, our coincident relation there. So let's bring that back. There we go. Sometimes splines have a mind of their own. Um, so now I'll go on the front plane and I'm going to control drag a new plane back um, I'd say four inches um, and I'm going to go ahead and save this just in case my uh, temperamental computer gives me trouble so we'll call it um, uh, well let's call it uh, part 700 and 52 or 705 whatever so um, now what I want to do is uh, create another sketch on this plane right here that basically will help become a transition from this circle to this so we're going from like something exactly symmetric to something much more organic um, so I'll start a sketch here grab a spline handle Line tool rather, and I'll take this point and this sketch and make pierce. And I'll pick this point and this point and make pierce. That way I know they're officially connected. Go to the front view, and um, this is where I'm going to guess a little bit. I'm going to drag this up and drag this down, and just, I don't know, kind of make something that's sort of circular, but sort of organic. And this is where, if I was being completely faithful to that design, I would be much more specific. But this is um, this is kind of a, a generic uh, demonstration. So something along these lines. You know, I could sit here and massage this until uh, until it was exactly what I want. But this would be sufficient uh, for this demonstration. So I pick these two and make those tangents and there's nothing really specific about this I just am eyeballing it so it looks good so okay and now what I want to do is create my surface so I'll go to surfaces boundary surface pick that that and that go to direction 2 pick the bottom sketch and then pick the top sketch and so now what I want to do is go back to sketch 5, this first one that I chose, and I will set it normal to profile. And I'll pick the last one out here, and I'll set that normal to profile. Everything else I'm going to uh, not worry about at the moment. Accept it, and now I have my uh, backrest. Half of it anyway. So I'll go on the right plane, features, mirror, bodies to mirror, backrest, mid surfaces, say OK. And now I have that part of the chair. Right? So from the right view, I think that'll be acceptable for what we're doing. So now what I need to do is create the intersection uh, where the back leg joins into, into this part. So I'll hit save. Um, and now I'm going to go to the top view. And if I open up that boundary surface, what I want to do is turn on or make visible that initial sketch that I used to create this surface. And the reason for that is that I want to take the right plane, uh, or right before that, excuse me, on the top plane, I want to sketch, and I want to put a point 
along this curve and I'm going to put it about right there um, again I'm eyeballing it so we'll exit that grab the right plane hold control and drag and I will land on that particular point move around and now I'm going to create a sketch on plane 2 so I go to that side I grab the line tool click on that point and drag down some amount at an angle that kind of looks like what we have in the picture right. so that that should work I'll exit and I'll go right to services swept surface choose circular profile pick that line as the path and change the dimension to 1.25. It's basically the same diameter as the front of our, um, what I'm calling the backrest. So I'm going to hide uh, that sketch. I'm going to hide that point. And now what I need to do is set myself up to create this intersection, which is really the point of this video. So if I go on the right plane, start a sketch. Um, uh, what I want to do specifically is come down to an area that seems like the starting point of where this fillet will happen. Um, and I'm going to say that it might be about right here. And I'm going to start a sketch outside of that. Go in a little bit. Do another one. And then a final one. So basically I have a sketch that has three segments. Um, and I'm not really concerned about anything else at the moment. I'm again, I'm just sort of winging it. Um, but the important part is that there are in fact three segments. Okay. So now if I go to surfaces and I hit trim surface and I uh, take the top of this tube off, what you'll see when you highlight is that there is a segment, there is a segment, there is a segment, and so on. Uh, up here, there's two segments and I believe that has something to do with the fact that when you do a swept surface there's kind of a, a line even though you don't see it it's sort of a, a segment of the surface here so um, now what I want to do is kind of repeat that for the, uh, the armrest so if I go to the side view right plane again grab the spline tool and I'm going to draw a spline out like this and I'm going to be tweaking this a little bit so again nothing specific uh, I'll move these handles something like that and then I'll take a straight line and add that to each end of the spline and I'll make these tangents make these tangents and then I'll kind of massage the angles and everything until until I kind of like it. Uh, that's about it. I know I'm going to be adjusting these later. So, so now what I want to do is the same thing. I want to go to surfaces and uh, trim surface and I'm going to trim that out. Um, the other side I'm not trimming. Um, I'm going to be mirroring that again so uh, it doesn't really matter. And now what I want to do is go to lofted surface and I want to loft between that segment and that segment. So with that I'm going to go to start and end constraints, do tangency to face, tangency to face, go to the right view and I'm going to drive the tangency a little bit more just so it kind of matches a little bit with what uh, the picture has. It won't be exact, but just kind of pushing the, the amount of tangency or how long it's tangent um, before it starts to curve. So again, that's kind of just an approximation. Now I'll do the other side the same way. Here I have these two segments. So what I'll do is right click, choose selection manager, I'll pick one, pick two, say okay, and now I'll come up here and pick the uh, segment on the backrest. And again, same thing, started in constraints, tangency to face, tangency to face, and then I'll look at it and evaluate. Looks like I want to push that up a little bit as well. That'll be fine. 
Say OK to that. And now I want to go to Knit Surface and pick all of these. Say OK. And now you can see that we have a nice uh, tangent transition from the backrest into the to the back leg. By, and you can tell by this dashed line. So um, the dashed line represents tangency. The red line just represents open edges. Um, and uh, those settings uh, are um, dealt with, uh, I believe, in the display menu. So you can come down and set tangent edges as phantom. That's what that dash line represents. Uh, and then the red line, I changed that in the, in the, in the um, program settings. Um, it's by default like a light blue color, color, but I'd rather it be red so I can see it a little easier. So now what I want to do is fill this in. And um, SolidWorks kind of considers this like a, a hole in a surface, right? So we have like this um, sort of black dash line joining all of these. And then where the red represents where the red line is, that represents like an opening or a hole in the surface. So this tool right here, Filled Surface, um, is a great option to handle this. So I'm going to right click on one edge, choose Select Open Loop, and it will give me a preview as it fills that in. Now what I want is tangency everywhere. So uh, what I'll do is check Apply to All Edges and set it to Tangent. And it looks like I'm getting some funny business. So I'm going to uncheck Optimize Surface. Uh, and that seems to be clearing it up. And then I'll say OK. And now I have um, this, uh, this patch, essentially, which if I go to Knit Surface, and I pick both of these, and say OK, I've got a nice transition um, tangent in all ways um, to the uh, or between the backrest and the, uh, the lower leg. So I'll come around to the other side and do the same thing. I'll right click, uh, select open loop, make sure all the settings are still applying. Um, optimized surface is a, is a uh, feature that I think works best uh, when you have more or less than four sides. Um, so if you have exactly four sides, which we do, I'm going to turn that off and then uh, I'll go to knit surface and apply that and this time it, we have black lines everywhere and I wonder if it's not knit we want to go back to surface fill I wonder if I just overlook that yeah so these uh, edges apply to all edges tangent so now we have a nice clean tangent patch all the way around so you can see from this view, there's a little bit of a bulge um, happening. If I go to the top view, uh, you can kind of see it poking out a little bit right there. And um, many times when you run this uh, routine, when you do this to, to create this kind of a blend, it won't automatically happen for you. Uh, you'll have to go back into um, one of the uh, trim sketches many times and you will have to adjust some of the handles and you know bend them a little more bring them out a little more lower them a little more there's you know just a little bit of uh, tweaking that you have to do to get it um, to to find a, to find the right place where it can it can resolve itself or blend from one surface to the next um, in this case we're looking pretty good but I think what I want to do is get rid of this bulge so I'm going to back up um, before the surface fills. And I'm going to go to uh, 3D Sketch, grab a spline, and I'm going to grab um, this point of the curve and this point of that curve. And I don't know. I might just kind of go with a straight line. We'll try that. So I'll say OK. And then I'm going to roll forward. For that surface fill and then I'm going to open it up and in constraint curves I'm going to pick that uh, line and then I'm going to roll down surface knit looks pretty good and if I move to the side now you can kind of see that I no longer have that bulge on that side right 
Now if I go to the front, we look at it, it looks like there's a little bit of a depression right there. Um, and so what this would require is going back into the uh, 3D sketch and manipulating it a little bit more so that it um, isn't necessarily straight. If I go to the front view, it's a little hard to sort of get to, but um, you could set this up with a 2D sketch if you wanted to. Um, and, uh, and I think that might you know, give you a little bit better results. And I don't believe if I pick these, I could try for uh, curvature. This might be problematic. Um, let's try that again. This is kind of giving me that sort of bold shape too. So not really, not really liking that. But um, let's just see what see what we get. So it kind of comes out a little bit, but that's actually cleaner than uh, my first result. So I think I'll leave that. So I would do the same thing for the other side. Um, but to keep this video short, I'm going to skip that. Um, and if I wanted to uh, really massage that even further, I'd probably go in, create a plane right there, use a 2D sketch, which is a little easier to manage. And then I would use that 2D sketch instead of this 3D sketch to kind of adjust how the, the leg blends into this upper surface. Um, but ultimately, uh, you should, you should count on um, taking some time to um, tweak the sketches after the surface has been built so that you can go in and manipulate it um, and watch it update. Uh, but uh, that is it for this video. Just a quick one that, that uh, breaks down the process of creating a blend like this. And I will see you next time.